Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Respiratory Arrest for a Patient with a Pulse. Respiratory arrest, known as apnea, happens when a person ceases to breathe or exhibits an absence of breathing. This is an emergency condition and can be related to cardiac arrest or a heart attack, and the normal respiratory rate will either go down or be absent. Respiratory arrest can come about from various factors, including an overdose of drugs like heroin, morphine, codeine, narcotics, anesthetics, and barbiturates. It can also be brought on by injury or infection in the central nervous system, or CNS, which alters the pressure of the cerebrospinal fluid, stroke, irregular heartbeats, cyanide, or carbon monoxide poisoning, heart attack, and other cardiac problems can also lead to respiratory arrest. Some signs and symptoms of respiratory arrest include difficulty when breathing, such as strider, or when something obstructs your windpipe or larynx, wheezing, or other breathing problems, as well as loss of consciousness, cyanosis, or a blue coloration of skin, no passage of air from the nose or mouth, low levels of oxygen in your blood, complaints of difficulty in breathing, and no chest rise and fall. In this section, we will cover the assessment, intervention, and management of an unconscious, unresponsive adult in respiratory arrest with a pulse. Both BLS and ACLS surveys are used to resuscitate patients in respiratory arrest. Remember, the following interventions are used during the BLS and ACLS surveys. Opening the airway, giving adequate oxygen, providing basic ventilation, and suctioning. Let's consider a scenario and the steps that should be taken. You are a nurse in the ICU and you see a patient who is complaining of chest pain. A few seconds later, the patient is lying completely motionless. You hear a few agonal gasps, and then you notice the patient is turning cyanotic. First, assess the situation and the patient. Check for a response from the patient by tapping them and asking, are you all right? Look at their chest for movement for a maximum of 10 seconds. Check their carotid pulse for a maximum of 10 seconds and confirm that there is a pulse present. Then call the doctor on duty. Next, you may intervene. As you have determined that there is a pulse, do not start chest compressions. Now you can start bag mask ventilations at a rate of one breath every five to six seconds or 10 to 12 breaths per minute. Now, to manage the situation, continue with ACLS survey as necessary. If you see that bag mask ventilation is not adequate, then you will need to insert either an oropharyngeal OPA or nasopharyngeal NPA airway. Next, administer oxygen and maintain a saturation of greater than or equal to 94% on pulse oximetry. Continue bag mask ventilations for one minute. Keep in mind it's very important not to overventilate the patient with too many breaths. Excessive ventilation can cause many problems as it increases intrathoracic pressure, reduces venous return to the heart, and blocks cardiac output. It can also cause gastric inflation and the patient may vomit and aspirate their gastric contents. This was the chapter on respiratory arrest for a patient with a pulse. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.